There is no sorrow in heaven. Revelation 4, 1 through 11. After these things I looked, and behold a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne, in an appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads, and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him, who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Heaven is such a mysterious place. There is no amount of words that can describe the blessed hosts. It is amazing that those who get to heaven will never be able to remember the suffering they had endured through on earth, because the joy of heaven will be so overwhelming that the sorrows that they had been through will be lost in it. A composer wrote, How beautiful heaven must be, sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. The joy of heaven is better experienced than learnt. There is no language that can describe its glory and the joy. Isaiah prophesied of the experience we will have in heaven, and at the end of the age, when the Lord shall create a new heaven and earth. Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die one hundred years old, but the sinner, being one hundred years old, shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build in another inhabit. They shall not plant in another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass, that before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, 
says the Lord. One of the greatest sorrows some people have ever experienced on earth is the death of their loved ones. But heaven will be a time of great reunion with all the saints. Imagine, you don't have to struggle with sickness and trying to prevent someone from dying. Brethren, imagine a world without a hospital because everyone will be living in perfect health and there will not be a single day of pain. What a joy untold we will all experience when we get to heaven. Revelation 21.4 reads, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. The same thing Isaiah prophesied long time before John was born was revealed to him in the island of Patmos, in heaven. There shall be no more death, sorrow, crying, hunger, complaints, sickness, disappointments, depression, or any evil. All these evils do not have the ability to cross over to creep into heaven. Heaven is a realm that is not compatible with evil. No matter how little it may appear, all the former things, the bad experiences that characterized our pilgrimage on earth will all pass away, never to be remembered or experienced. Revelation 22, 3 through 5 says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. All the curses working against people and against the earth will be disannulled when we get to heaven because curses cannot exist where the throne of God and the presence of Christ is resident. More so, there will be no night in heaven. Night symbolizes darkness, fear, and anxiety. Nothing will terrify us in heaven because we will never walk in darkness. There will never be day nor night because the glory of the Lord will give light to it. There is no earthly technology that can sustain the continuity of heavenly glory. The power and the glory of the Lord will be responsible for all things. Irrespective of the storms that are raging against you here, and regardless of the number of opposition you have in this side of life, your consolation should be that this world is not your home and that heaven will surely pay for all the sufferings that we have endured thus far. There is nothing we suffer on earth in order to lay hold on eternal bliss with God that is regrettable. The joy of heaven will overshadow the sorrows, sufferings, pains and afflictions we have been through on this earth. Apostle Paul said in Romans 8.18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There is nothing that should ever make us to forfeit our race to heaven because the glory of heaven outweighs the sorrows of the world. If heaven is not better than what we have here. There wouldn't have been any reason to strive to get in there. But we have a great consolation and assurance that heaven is full of joy. More so the Holy Spirit, who is the seal of our salvation, continually bears witness in our hearts that heaven is a joyful place. And this he proves to us by stirring up the joy of salvation in our hearts. Paul said nothing would ever separate him from the love of Christ. Heaven is indeed a beautiful place, and there is no sacrifice that is too great to be offered in order to get there. As a matter of fact, when we get to heaven, we will admit that the price we paid to get there is nothing compared to the prize we will be rewarded with. Heaven is only for those who are saved 
and would not compromise their faith. Luke 9.62 says that no one who having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. If you are not saved yet, you need to give your life to Christ first before you can be enrolled as a candidate of heaven. Meanwhile, believers who are backsliding must amend their ways too so that they will not end up laboring in vain. We must not allow the sorrows of this world to rob us of the unexplainable joy of heaven. 1 Corinthians 2.9 But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him.